All right, so with any technology, privacy is one of the key things that you always want to consider if you're going to scale and grow. This happened in the era of the internet. It happened in the era of social. It happened in the area, area of mobile. And today we're going to take a look and see and really understand where Web3 could be going when it comes to privacy and how that might affect you guys and some of the projects that you might be interested in. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Joining me, of course, is Will over from Oasis Network. Great to have you on the show, Will. Thanks for stopping in. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Paul. Glad to be here. And I'm glad that we're going to have a chance to talk about privacy today. So, Will, let's get into a little bit of detail around, uh, first of all, what Oasis is. Uh, when we looked at it, uh, again, just for our audience, this isn't a paid review. We're not doing a review. We're, we're learning a little bit more about how privacy works within the ecosystem of Web3. You guys are one of the protocols out there that are working specifically in this area. Can you kind of give me a rundown of what Oasis is up to? Yeah. So um, Oasis is um, a, a layer, one, layer one blockchain network with a focus on confidentiality and privacy. Um, so from the get-go, we started with um, this modular architecture where we have a, a separation of consensus and execution. So we have the underlying consensus chain, which handles uh staking, governance, and then I guess um, sending transactions through the consensus layer, and then um, as well as the validation of proofs that come from the execution layer. The execution layer is made up of parallel runtimes, which we call power times. Um, right now there are three. Um, we have Emerald, we have Cypher, and we have Sapphire. I'm sure we'll get into the, the differences and the nuances of all three uh, in a bit, but basically um, they they are they can be thought of as similar to rollups where they're handling just the execution and they're submitting proofs on, uh, on chain to the consensus layer which they then are validated um, and then yeah so that, that that modular architecture is now becoming very popular um, with things like ethereum 2.0 polka dot right. um, Cosmos, stuff like that and so we're very excited um, and, and humbled to to sort of have been paving this technological way for this all, all this time a lot of developers rolling into Oasis and starting to really kind of understand one, the scalability, and but the more important component here is the privacy component and what that might look like. You know, we've saw we saw a lot seen, a lot of development in Web two, Web three outside of digital ID. We haven't seen as much focused and centered around privacy. Obviously, there is some sort some level of anonymity around crypto in general, but. When you get into real use case, one of the things that lists, especially on a web two to web three conversion or brands that are trying to leap to a web three tool set, privacy is one of the first things that they look at. When you think and look at this, first of all, how do you feel Oasis is solving problems for the web two projects that are trying to make it into web three environments when it comes to privacy? Oh, yeah. Um, so there's a few things to unpack there. First, I think that, you know, um, yeah, I think you're, you're right. Like, pri like a, there's been a little bit of work in privacy, but a lot of what people have focused on in privacy so far has been like um, anonymous transactions, which, you know, is useful. And, and it's something that probably we should have and we should have the ability to do, do anonymous transactions. But in, in Web2, we see that there's so much more that goes into privacy. Um, and, and in reality, what privacy enables is um, more sophisticated uh, smart contracts and applications with um, better user experiences. And I think that's like the Oasis vision, and what we're focusing on right now in terms of like what we can offer Web2. Um, so when web, as Web2 products are starting to move into the you know, Web3 atmosphere, they, they, they already have privacy guarantees um, and they're, they're mostly looking to go to Web3. Um, in order to take use to, uh, to leverage the ability to have um, high integrity and trustless nature of smart contracts and, and being on chain, as well as like the composability features, but at the same time they have to they have to preserve the privacy that they already have in their um, their current state, and so yeah. that that's really what Oasis enables. It enables um, and then it probably even empowers privacy more in the sense that um, with these on chain smart contracts, you can you can get sort of self custody of your own data and, and then manage that the access to that data through smart contracts and through these on-chain actions. Um, and that, that's really what I think Oasis's vision is for, for helping Web2 products move to Web3. All right, so with that being the case, um, 
you've got a couple of things that are happening here. I want to jump over to your website uh, and look at Sapphire. All right. So, and there, there's kind of different layers here, you know, for a developer. And for many of you guys that are watching this today, you know, understanding how uh, Web3 is going to work is very critical, one, in understanding the kind of projects that maybe you invest in. But more importantly, it's the use case scenarios that eventually roll up into Web3 that, you know, kind of converge from Web2. That's really the reason that we wanted to have Oasis on. But when you look at Sapphire, um, this is an EVM-based dApp, so pretty much kind of the hot ticket right now. Uh, obviously, we've seen a lot happening in that area. The difference between Sapphire and then Emerald, which is full EVM compatibility, low gas fees, all that, and then you go all the way to Cypher, uh, which is where you get WebAssembly. Explain the difference here for a DAP developer. How do they kind of figure out what is the best for them in the grocery shopping cart here? Yeah, so like I said, we have those three paradigms. Um, so as you mentioned, Emerald was is our full EVM compatible chain. That was the first um, sort of network we, we put live on mainnet. Um, that network now is pretty much um, for anyone who who maybe is building like a cross-chain application that wants to connect to the Oasis ecosystem or um, a Solidity developer who, who is just interested in launching their application but has no need for privacy or anything like that. That's a great environment for Emeralds. Um, and then as you know, they're, they need privacy or they, they, they want, want to make use of these confidential aspects of state that's, that the other networks offer, they can sort of um, have like a, a stepping stone into the Oasis ecosystem. That's at least how I view Emerald. Then we have Sapphire, which is our most recently launched product. Um, it's the first and only confidential um, EVM supporting confidential smart contracts with a, a encrypt encrypted aspects of state. And so what that means is like, you know, as, as, you, as most people are aware, like on a normal EVM on Ethereum, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, um, everything is transparent all the time, which, you know, is there's lots of benefits to that, but also yeah. there's, it limits the, the sophistication of like what can be built with smart contracts. And so the best way I normally explain it is through like um, different examples. So uh, maybe the easiest example to understand is gaming. Um, so if you want to build like an entirely Web3 native game, right? Um, maybe you want to build a card game, um, a strategy game, or even like a, a role playing game. Um, they, each of these types of games have, um, they, they require some sort of confidential aspect of state. So card game, like you have to hide what is the, in the other player's hand, as well as you have to hide the current state of the deck. Because if you didn't, then you could just have bots that like basically are know exactly right. what the other player is doing and then play optimally from there. And so that means that like right as of right now, if you want to build a card game, then you have to take this component of the game off chain. But if you take that component of the game off chain, then you lose the like high integrity and trustless nature that brings everyone to Web3 in the first place. And so that's like not ideal. But it was just a it was just a state of um, you know where we were at in Web three. So now with Sapphire, that that you can now build that entirely on chain game uh, and, with, and not have to sacrifice either uh, decentralization and high integrity for privacy mm -hmm. or vice versa. Um, so I, normally I go into a little bit more like strategy games. You normally have like this idea of fog of war, where like you hide resources on the map and you hide like the the player the the location and coordinates of the, the opponent's units. And even something like a role-playing game, like there's these ideas of quests, puzzles, riddles, where like the solution has to be hidden. And so, um, yeah, pretty much any any compelling game will have some aspect of that. And I, and I don't want to just focus on gaming, but I think it's the easiest one to explain it. But it has benefits in all sorts of things yeah. from insurance to DeFi to um, decentralized identity. Yeah, pretty much you name it. Um, I think that confidential state will be beneficial to that to that sector of Web3. Well, and, and if, you, if you look at, I mean, we work with a lot of Web2 brands who are trying to integrate into Web3. They're utilizing it for a lot of different tool sets, some of which have focused around loyalty. And with loyalty, they have gamification aspects to it. You can look at everything from loyalty scratch cards to competitions to uh, loyalty-based benefits, all those kind of things that even, even to the gamification side to where there's rewards, which obviously would be needed for something of that nature. Uh, in, in terms of at least kind of safeguarding it. Let's talk a little bit about um, individuals' data. Uh, this is something that really Web3 touts as one of the key components, and that is I'm in control of my own data. 
as I start to venture out into Web3, I'm going to jump into dApps and different platforms and protocols, but it's my data. How would Oasis kind of connect the dots there to secure personal data in Web3? Yeah. Um, so basically, in the Web2 model is that some centralized entity uh, collects all this data and then right. um, you are, you know, forced to uh, trust them to to manage that data appropriately in, in accordance to your best interests and to not leak that data. Um, and, and in reality, like the way that you should look at it is like, well, you know, what did banks do? Like, that's exactly what banks did with your money. Like you had to trust them with, with, with handling your money properly and making sure that you can always redeem it and that, you know, they won't lose it. Um, and this is like what Bitcoin and, you know, the, the sort of blockchains help solve. And so like each sort of iteration of blockchain, each, each major leap forward has just been allowing more and more things to be self custody like that. And so right. what I really view is like what, what Oasis is doing right now um, for, for data is, you know, just a, um, the next step forward in like what blockchain did for, for, for money and for net, then financial assets and now data. Um, and so at a high level, like how it would work is that, you know, your data would be stored instead of like uh, in a, in a centralized database, database um, controlled by some tech company. Instead, it would be stored in like some decentralized file storage, like IPFS, uh, Filecoin, you know, any of these Arweave. things. Arweave, yeah, sure. Yeah, Arweave, yeah, storage. Yep. Um, I think BNB has Greenfield coming out. There's actually a lot of them coming out. Um, a ride chain has one. Um, There's going to need to be. I mean, if this if we start to see a mass adoption, you're going to need these kinds of potential storage facilities to handle this. So. I would totally exactly. agree. All right, and so the data the data stored off chain or on chain, but uh, cent decentralized. In the aspect of how a user is going to be able to draw up on that, is that where Oasis comes in in reference to kind of that protocol into these DApps that are working in all these different variations? Yeah, exactly. And so, like, what you could do is is, is you can have that in an encrypted storage, so that like you know you need some decryption key. And instead, instead of having like one person manage that decryption key, you can have it managed by a smart contract using the Oasis okay. Sapphire Key Manager. Yeah. And so basically the decryption key will be given to whatever wallet accounts have that. And so let's say it's your data. Well, you always have access, but now you you have the ability to grant and revoke, you know, to create these permissions on that access to other people to do whatever it is that they want to do. So maybe it's paywall yeah. content, like a Patreon or something like that. Exactly. And they just have yeah. access forever. But maybe you also Perfect. have like genetic data stored there. And maybe you want to allow, I don't know, some pharmaceutical company to run some sort of analysis on that genetic data, but you only want them to run that sort of analysis on that mm -hmm. small subset of data. And you only want them to have access for, for six months. Well, now like that becomes possible, um, you know, using these, these smart contracts to manage access and, and encryption. Keys you know, when I have stuff. a chance, yeah, I have a chance to talk to a lot of business owners and, and uh, you know, industry leaders that we talk about these kinds of scenarios. And those are the elements of Web3 that I think a lot of people miss is that a lot of this protocol framework and a lot of the rails, so to speak, it's much like when the internet was born before we had SSL, you know, we were kind of out there, you know, Wild West show on where security and privacy was going, at least with Web3, it's being looked at at the onset, which I think is super critical in Web3's uh, growth and adoption. I want to chat with you quickly on AI. You look at AI and its integration, ChatGPT, we'll just go on and on uh, with some of the integrations. Many people now are, are talking about AI in blockchain. Do you think that has the potential of being able to add to this as a benefit to the protocol? Uh, to, to, I think that Oasis has the ability to, to propel the future of AI is how I would say. It. So, um, you know, AI is basically um, as powerful as the data that it's allowed to consume. So the, the, the larger data sets, as well as the larger the quality of data, the more useful AI can be. Um, right. And there's like fields like healthcare right now, where like data is siloed and there's like all of these um, privacy laws that, that that are good in web two because they stop, you know, data from getting leaked and from, from people losing their, their, you know, their inherent right to privacy. Um, mm -hmm. But it also prevents, you know, data from being shared. Like sometimes you, in the, at least in the States, like you might have two different healthcare, you know, providers like 
two different aspects of your healthcare and they're not allowed to talk to one another about the, the data, but like they both need access to each other's data. And it's just because of the laws, they're not able to actually access it. Um, obviously that, that sort of infrastructure, um, you know, hinders AI's ability to, to benefit off that data. And so creating like a, a system where like you can share data um, in a privacy preserving way for, for the benefit of AI and to increase health outcomes, I think is like really beneficial. Um, so like ChatGPT, for example, is doing things on all public data, um, like creating these language models. Uh, we're partnering with a product called Personal AI, um, who's who is basically building the same thing as ChatGPT, but also allowing you to share your own private data. And, and right. so like these types of things um, are enabled using the Oasis network. Um, this might be interesting. Like. This might be interesting because uh, there are some uh, anti-AI people. And uh, I think to a certain extent, if you're controlling your own data in the next evolution of what we will know as Web3, this would be because AI obviously feeds specifically off of whether it's public data, private data, in you know, uh, comprehensive data inside proprietary systems, all those kind of things would need access to it to really kind of deliver a result. So that would be interesting to see if there are constraints that AI is allowed to access based on whether it's health or strategies, business models, all sorts of things that today you could kind of look at and almost to a certain extent with ChatGPT build a business case against your competitor and so on. So I'm just thinking of ways that privacy will be able to lock that up in Web3. It's definitely going to be an yeah. interesting, I mean, interesting I think, role. You know, what I did was I gave like a like a overview of like a potential landscape, I think, like in a potential use cases. But like at the end of the day, we're still very early in both like the Web three space yeah. as well as the AI space. I think you know we can't really predict what the regula regulations are going to be or like what the the end use case will look like. Um, I think the important thing is just to build the tooling, and that's like what Oasis is focused on: is building the ability to to create these things. And then allowing regulators, entrepreneurs, all, all that to to do their thing, you know, uh, to to leverage those tools to to build those those use cases. And I think that Oasis is pretty agnostic in that regard. Um, so long as you know we empower the user to own their data and to be able to you know choose whether they want to share it or not share it. You know, if you know the idea of like sharing healthcare data sounds great, but if no users want to share it, then that's that's entirely yeah, fine. Exactly. That's, that's and so like, that's, I think, what Oasis is focused on, it's just empowering Very the cool. users and the tools. Hey, Will Wint, it's been great having you on today. Thank you so much for stopping in. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. Have a great day. Excellent. All right, so you guys are maybe listening over the podcast side of things. Jump over here to the YouTube channel. This is where you catch a lot of our live streams. Make sure and subscribe. Also hit the little bell icon. You'll be able to get notified when we do our live streams out there. And of course, always leave some comments. We'd like to get your feedback on projects and things that you think uh, we should be covering here on the network. We'd love to get all of our audience's feedback. Of course, if you want to reach me, it's out there on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.